Well, what's the crack? How are you getting on? I'm going to be quick here this morning. Uh, Saturday morning, you're all very welcome to a 130 a buckshot for the 16th of November 2019. Like I said, I'm going to be quick. There's a young fella roaring and shouting over there. He's a fucking mouthful of teeth coming through. So you know yourself, the crack is 90. I'll be in the Laughter Lounge this Thursday. I'll be in on show, actually, back in on show. Very excited by that. Haven't done on show in fucking youngs. So on show, Comedy Club on Camden Street. I'll be there Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday and Saturday. I'll be in the Laughter Lounge. Oh, Jesus. Back doing stand-up, lads. Back doing stand-up. For a few people that uh, messaged about Caveman this week, we will be coming back around with Caveman. We just had a meeting the other day. We'll be having a further meeting about meetings on meetings. There he is now roaring in the background. He's pure fucking thick. Um, and we will. We will. And it'll be coming back fast. Sooner rather than later. We'll be coming back most likely, please God, in either February or March next year. And Dublin is on the fucking card sooner than fucking later. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. Thanks very much to the Patreons with a couple of new ones this week. I'll get chatting about you on, um, on Buckshot on Tuesday. But uh, Buckshot, fucking Ramblepot. I'll get talking about you on Ramblepot. What the hell is wrong with my brain today? Um, Thank you very much. Patreon, of course, if you don't know what it is, it helps the lifeblood of the show. As uh, Gorda would say, puts tea in the mugs and lights, keeps the bulbs in the lights over here at uh, Buckshot. It doesn't really. It doesn't go towards lights or fucking tea. It goes towards diesel, going to interview guests and pay for new gear. And thanks very much, uh, Oshin, sending me on a link to some tasty fucking lav mics. That's what I need. I have the fucking kit. I just need the decent mics. So patrons, as a result of ye, I will be buying decent lav mics so that if we do go to a place that's a bit windier, a bit fucking wild, these yokes are much tastier. They fit up inside a man's shirt and they're right underneath your chin. Or a woman's shirt, depending on who, you know, what way they want to wear it. But it's a n- much niftier set. So that's coming next. That's next on the shopping list. Thank you very much, patrons. That's where the Patreon money goes. So if you do like listening to this and you figure, fuck it, I'd buy that man a, a coffee or a pint, sling it at it. Throw it at it yourself. Go in through PayPal. You'll be in and out in 25 seconds. Job oxo. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. This will be going out slightly early. Uh, last week, I don't know what the fuck happened with Patreon. It didn't go up. It went up. The picture of, of the, the episode went up, but it didn't go up earlier um, than it's supposed to be. But typically these go up earlier purely for Patreons first. And there will be more exclusive Patreon stuff coming once a bit of time frees up. But you know the crack yourselves, lads. Fair play to, you to everybody that has helped out. And people buying merch, because that all goes towards the old podcast as well. Buying merch, buy a couple of stickers, why not? Um, or even buy yourself a hoodie. As I've noticed, people have... Nothing better than seeing somebody walking towards you with a picture of your face on their clothes. Fucking love it. <laughs> Follow me on all the usual social platforms if you haven't already. It's uh, Tom O'Mahony Comedy. We'll find it everywhere. Really, lads, everywhere. Everywhere. Chatty Snaps, of course, is Tom Bear O'Mahony, if that's your bag. But, dude, lash me on an old picture. Screen grab it where you listen. Some mad shit you're doing. Um, yeah, it's been great. This week I've been getting just lads just driving tractors, driving trucks. Heading into work, listening on the Lewis fucking, uh, you know, trail a load of fucking straw for a, for a horse somewhere. I love that shit. Send me on all that stuff. I need to know when where you're listening to the podcast so that I know you're actually out there. And do hit subscribe. Don't be fucking around. Now. Don't be listening to this live, you know, in a live feed kind of a thing. Just fucking hit subscribe, will you? So that way I'll know who's fucking listening. Just hit subscribe. It'll be popping into your ears twice weekly, at least twice weekly. Um... So give everything a not usual follow. If you want to follow Buckshot or you want to send me something longer on Twitter, over on the Twitter, um, Buckshot Pod, Pod will find it over there. Or BuckshotPodcast at gmail.com if you want to send me a good old long form, which a few people have. Or you can go straight through the fucking website. Lads, quite literally, you could nearly all but turn up to your house to tell me what you have to tell me. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, that's all that shit out of the way. Remember it. It'll be in the show notes anyway for the most part. So... Um, my guest today, I've been gigging with this man since day dot. He is just one of the most unique fucking people you'll ever meet. He's a fucking stormer of a comedian. He just, he puts you in good mood, in a good mood. He's always fucking funny. He has unbelievably interesting story. Wait till you hear this story, the backstory of this man. Like, um, he's the most, I think he's the most requested uh, comedian in, from, from people, from fucking audience members. I think he's the most requested comedian in the in the laughter lounge um he fucking always he just always cracks me up i'm always happy when i see willie white and you're he, this is gonna blow you away it isn't fucking roaring laughing from beginning to end it's an unbelievable like 
Oh, unbelievable story. We talk about just fucking everything. Wait and you fucking hear this. So do you know what? Strap in, get yourself a cup of cocoa and listen to the fantastic Willie White. Willie White. How are you getting on? Good, Tom. Good, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. It's always good to see you. It's a fucking lovely cup of tea. Thank you very much. I oh, sure, I make a decent one. The family's from the Liberty, so they always look a strong cup of tea. Why are you lying, bastard? You almost made me a fucking herbal <laughs> tea. How far you've come? <laughs> Will you come in? Willie White makes me a fucking herbal tea. Yeah, it Will wasn't mine. I don't know anything about it. I don't drink herbal tea. <laughs> As you can tell by my physique, I don't think. Um, Herbal food or, or herbal tea or organic food is anything, you know, that I be drinking or eating, should you say? You know? Well, wait, like, because you still keep a hand in the buildings, like, but do you eat healthy now? Like, because, I mean, when I was in the buildings, I used to eat like a fucking, you wouldn't feed it to a dog. To start, oh, like, God, fucking, come here, do you know what? Not moment, everything in a white roll. Well, do you know what? I was away the weekend, I was up in Donegal and we climbed Mount Errigal on Friday. And then we went, this is a real Irish thing, I thought it was very funny. We'd done a park run on a beach. How weird is that? <laughs> they have a park run on a beach in Narran. It's one of five in Europe, believe that. Right. Park runs that are on beaches. And a beautiful, beautiful place, freezing. And I went up to do it. Everyone else was doing it. I haven't... I'm strong as a ox, but I'm not fit. Right, yeah, yeah. And it was 5k, and I'd probably done about 3.5k and walked the other k and a half. And I realised how overweight and how unfit I am from that park run. And um, well, I like I couldn't do the, even the 1k I'd say because until you like that running shit is would murder you oh come here listen but you know what it, it's it's for it's for certain type of people I even when I was a bit fit there a few years ago running wouldn't be my no, forte but you see we're built like goats mountain goats mm. fellas like me and you like we're kind of stocky yeah I think you need those scrawny legs and like a scrawny little back and but, you can go all day like but, but it'd probably been a good rugby player yeah you would actually you yeah. know you actually would be a good rugby player. Like you have the you have the build of a of yeah. A I have the physique. Yeah, you know, not can't run for long, but I can you know run a little bit. You know, well, front rowers only do about fifty minutes. Do you know they won't do the full eighty? Like so, it's great. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, okay, but you know, no. So I, 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 I do I eat healthy. I don't really. Today, what did I eat? Without telling you, lawyers, I went into work today. I wasn't really well. Um, I got food poisoning. In Donegal, I ate oysters for the first that. time. Yeah, how shellfish of me. And, um, <laughs> Trying to get a bit of aphrodisiac <laughs> on that, were you? It's a cheap way, I think. You can buy the Viagra for nothing. No, do you know what? I, 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 and I think that's what done me. And that was from Sunday. And I don't know whether it's carried on. I've had a bug or something, but I wasn't well. So today I went into work. And at the 10 o'clock break, I had a brown roll with cheese, ham, and a bit of coleslaw, a package of king. And then for the main break, I didn't have anything. And then I got home and I had a spaghetti bolognese for me dinner. And I had a couple of biscuits there, so is that healthy? It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not too bad. Like. But the night is the worst time for me. It's murder. Like, like especially even, even been in a house like with, with, with kids and there's, you oh, know, there's the stuff in the like, You look in and I mean, like that you offered me like a time out or a biscuit. I can't take that. Because I'll eat all your biscuits. Yeah, oh, well, I, I, I'm like that as well. I'll, 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 every fucking one of them is gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, the way, and the way they make them now is Colin McDonald says, yeah, where the line is, you open them, you're, you're five down already. Sure, who can stop And for five? foldage, <laughs> you need another four gone. There you go. You know? Now you're nine biscuits And you live two for luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're half a package of biscuits down already, you know? But you, do, you don't drink anymore, sure you don't? No, I haven't drank in a long time. I haven't drank... I say anymore, like I, I don't drink. ever remember you drinking. I haven't had a drink in 18 and a half years. Jesus. So I'm toasty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. My, my, my history will be, um, I've, I've got a history of uh, drug and drink background, so it's it's not for me. It's it's all or nothing. If I drink, I use drugs, so that's why I don't drink. People say to me, I go on, have a drink. Why don't you drink? I'd say, would you like to see this lovely pub smashed up in the cards here in about an hour? And they look at me and go, what? I'd say, well, that's what happens when I drink. I will look, we'll get you a Diet Coke. <laughs> I'll get you a taxi, fuck yeah. that. Yeah, so I don't. It doesn't, um, and you know what? I don't miss it. And I come from a really big drinking family. Like, my father was a big drinker. Um, 
my father's father was a big drinker. They're all drinkers. It's right, all yeah, drink, yeah. drink, drink. And for me, sometimes, I, 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 you know, now, but I mean, they not, the, my family obviously know, you know, cousins and that where I've come from. And, and so it's just safer that I don't drink. And addiction runs riot in my family. We have a couple of cousins passed away in the last couple of years from, from heroin overdoses and, it's uh, I mean, not only my family, it's a lot of families in working class areas, and not only working class areas, middle class areas, and the likes of Darkie and the rural likes of areas yeah, too. Come, like, yeah, come here. it's it's an it's you know, it, it's like Shaw's, it's almost nationwide, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> what it is, and, and I've noticed, like, I don't know, have you, you know, gigging and stuff like that because you're out and you're meeting the public, the amount of people doing coke now. There's more people doing coke than there is drink. Unbelievable. I was talking to a fella today, as a matter of fact, on a building site. I'm walking down at the back of All Hollows there today. And he was telling me about a job he was on in town. And I says, oh, that's mad. He's walking on a place in town. I'm not going to mention the place because I don't, I don't want to give it a, a, a bad name. And he says, oh, I used to score drugs in there, you know? Yeah. He says, oh, sure, it's mad. He says, we're down there now. He says, on Friday morning, he says, all the lads is in the toilets buying coke from the people in the area. And they're all sniffing, walking on a building site. Doing, <clears throat> doing coke, yeah, yeah. And build, and a building. Yeah, well, that's a plus side. The building would be built quicker. <laughs> if you put under time, like you know. Um, you stop for lunch. No, no. Yeah, I'm but, I'm but, I'm but come here. It's it's all over the place. I see it all the time. I see it on building sites. I I the know. Fuck are you I doing know. Taking la- coke at a building site. I know lads are taking drugs and and but come here. That's it's it's all about choices and it's about you know. I think not, like because the buildings have gone fairly tight at the minute. Especially some of them, the sort of ones you're on because you're on fairly. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, some some of the ones I'm on now there's random drug tests. That's what I was y- going to say. Y- yeah, you, you got to sign up, like, and I tell you, lads, you know, in general, that smoke a bit of weed or, or take a bit of Charlie or do whatever, they'd be very reluctant to sign it, but they have to sign it if they want walk. So, because it was a there's a I was talking with a fellow he's a plant hire company and there's a job going on just above the airport. It's about 10 diggers up there. Right. Two, just at the back there, yeah. Yeah, two fellas got fucking nabbed. Go away. With class A drugs in their system. They actually tested them. Um, they took urine samples off them because they're operating heavy machinery. And <sighs> they took drug samples off them. Your man got belted with a 10 grand fine for his employees. Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. There's some, there's some work going on up there. But come here, it's like, it's, it's, it's any job. They're all down here. You don't have to be working on a building, so... It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't differentiate what you do, like. Yeah. I mean, there's people in the banking sector that are doing it. You know, it's not, cocaine now is not, it's not a white collar thing. It's not if you have nah. plenty of money, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's everywhere. I it's was, frightening, like. I was saying it, I was only, because, and I, I couldn't work it out, because I, I never did drugs, because I, I always just fucking played sports, and at a decent enough level, we were getting tested at under 18, like. Right, so right. Now I, now I smoked a bit, all right, like, you know what I mean, but. You just get nabbed too fucking early, like, and you you would be nabbed. Like there was a few lads got done, and they it was a seven year immediate ban if they got caught caught in your piss, like basically. But so I was kind of naive to these youngsters that were so fucking confident in gigs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So getting lippy, and you're going, where are you getting that confidence from, yeah. you little fucker? And then all getting of a sudden, getting out of his bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw seven people, seven people on a walk from the international one night at the car parked up by, you know, the Swan. I oh, do, swan yeah, yeah, I know. So yeah. what is it, maybe four, Opposite the chapel up yeah, there, yeah. Maybe 400 yards, walked up, and seven different people on the street doing, with their own little, oh yeah, little, you know, whatever they call it, fucking spoon or whatever, and they were doing coke, chatting. P- two people in a lineup for the ATM, you're like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? yeah. Like there must be next to impossible to fucking to police this shit. Like it's 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 madness, and you get these people like go out on the weekend and spend crazy amounts of money on cocaine, and have the audacity and have the neck to look down on people that take heroin. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing the very same. The the, the the class A drugs that they're taking, they don't realise that I do now is that every lion that goes up there knows is contributing somewhere to someone getting a bullet in the head. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, yeah, and that's the truth. Yeah. Because most of the people that are getting shot in Dublin nowadays is drug related. And and the stuff that people are buying, whether you're a banker, whether you're an undertaker, whether you work in a building site, or you're a baker or a candlestick maker, it's contributing to a world of crime. And when people are getting shot on the streets of Dublin or in Ireland, that's that's what you're contributing to. It's fucking mental, isn't it? Like But that's 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 the bare the bare truth of it. Yeah. People don't think of that. It's just ah oh, we'll get the bag, you know, we'll get this and we'll get that, like but it runs so much deeper. And then they don't look at the other side of 
We've got a mate of mine has his own business in town. He has a lad walking for him. He's six and a half grand safe to get a car. His yeah. brother got a, a drug debt. They knocked on the door. He says, we're going to burn the fucking house down. Jesus. We've eight grand. He owes us eight grand. Uh. And that young fella had to walk all that time had to get a savings. Uh. <laughs> because his mum's house was going to get burned down. His brother was going to get shot. And there's credit unions. People going to the credit unions and getting loans. People knocking on door. It's going on all the time. Fuck. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, people just still chop up and do a line like that. That's the that's the undercurrent of it, the dark side of it. You know, it's not all bleeding. You know, champagne, caviar, and you know, one of bags of cocaine. Like, and what was the crack back when you would say? Would say what was it? Twenty years ago, you you yeah, were yeah. The, well, the last time I used was probably about twenty years ago. It it was a different animal altogether. Yeah, yeah, like when yeah. I used and when I scored drugs and. I remember smoking crack cocaine when I was 18 in Did London. You? Yeah, in London. Right? How was it? Was it was great crack. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were going yeah, to say Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? And, and that was 30, 30 years ago. Jesus. And crack cocaine is only really starting to take a hold now in Dublin. So you got it before it was cool. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's... it's, it's um, but that's another different thing. I mean, my, my nephew was living up in Ballymun and he's living on the front line of where it's going on. And he told me that in the last three years since crack cocaine has started coming around, the whole place has completely torn and completely changed. It's got more violent, it's got more dangerous, and it's it, it, it's just not a nice place to live. Like Ballymun kind of, it got his socks kind of pulled up a bit though, didn't it? Like when they... I, 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 I would totally disagree with that, Tom. I really? Would, yeah. Well, this, can, is the, this is the shit that gets fun. This, this is my, this is my you, take Because you know. Me. I was there... Pre-generation, and I was there post-regeneration. And they came in, and they promised the sun, moon, and the stars, and they didn't even get the fucking sun. Like They came in, and they said they were going to do this, you know, they were going to do this. for. It was all about doing something for the people in the area. They promised jobs. They didn't get the jobs. Basically, what they done is, they walked into an area, and they threw a mask on a place. Right. That's what they done. So it was like a supermodel that had a hair lip, and they <laughs> fixed the hair lip. Do you know what I mean? But... It, it, the undercurrent problem is still there. Yeah. The drugs has got worse. Like when I when I scored in Ballymun, you went down into a street corner and you scored. Right. That was it. You walked up the bleeding, you know, Anto or Deco, and you you bought what you were getting, and and you went on. You seen a face. Nowadays, it's it's like ordering a pizza. You ring up someone. They come <laughs> to your house. They drop the drugs to your house, and and, and that's the way it is. And Bally, Bally, Ballymun, I mean, look at the. the the contractors and the developers made a fortune out of the place. They do nothing for the people in Ballymun. They do nothing. The, the, some of the, the houses, the house that my sister lived in was like it was built with Salvador Dali. You're looking around the corner to look at the television in the sitting room. It was like it was just crazy. Like. Oh, yeah. So they, they do nothing. They, you know, they, they do nothing. And it still has the same problems. And the drug problem is still worse. And, and they, 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 do, they do nothing. They left the shop. The shop in town in, in downtown Islamabad is fucking in better <laughs> nick than the one in Ballymun. Do you know what I mean? They're taking it down now at the minute. They promised a beautiful shopping centre the whole lot. They do nothing. They, they, they didn't do that for the area. Jesus. It's a, honest to God, come here. If you're going to the airport, it looks all right now to drive through. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the problems are there worse, right. in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. They do nothing for the people. They oh. do nothing for it. When did you move out of there? You, oh, grew, you grew up. I there, grew right? up in Ballymun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I grew up. Me, me, and my sister, and my mum, and my dad um, grew up there. I moved out of there. I got out of prison in two thousand and one, and I probably moved out of Ballymun in two thousand and four. Right. I left m- m- my sister's place and. Um, was fortunate enough then, you know, to, to, to get the, the makings of a mortgage together and got a house, like, yeah. you know, um, which I probably classed as queer from Bally Money to get a mortgage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, playing queer. Like, it's know? funny, like, isn't it? But, is it? but that's kind of something that I was gonna, going to get around to. Like, like you, you just jump straight on it that uh, is it nearly looked down upon somebody who's trying to do well for themselves? Of course it is. You know. Oh, come here. Listen, come here. There's a lot of people out there who love to, love to see you doing well. Genuine people. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, fair play. But most of them have the who do you think you fucking are syndrome. Do you know what I mean? Who does he think he is going around in his new car and, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's all right for people that are up there. 
you know, that are doing the wrong things to have nice stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, so I don't really understand what yeah, that a, is. So is it cool to, you know, wreak havoc in the environment that you're in and, and do whatever you're doing illegally up there and get nice stuff? But it's not all right for a fella that gets out of bed every morning at six o'clock yeah. and works his fucking hole off See, to, e- do, to it, do well for himself. It's easier, I suppose, isn't it, to just fucking slag off the system and going, oh, well, you know, that's just fucking, there he is being a man of the system. Where yeah. these fellas seem a bit more rebellious, you know, because they're just doing whatever the fuck they want, and it's more, it's 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 an easier life to do that shit. Yeah, of like, course you know. it is. But I mean, the, the, the young kids up there that don't have much going on in their families, if you know, some of families have addiction, or you know, that are just been led astray, are being groomed by the older lads up there just to come in and do, you know, it's attraction. They're seeing these young fellas with, you know, two hundred quid trainers on them, Rolex watches, you know, and they want that. Yeah. And the older lads are telling them, what would you want to go out to walk for on a building so you're a fool, you, like, you're yeah. fucking agent, like, yeah, bring that over there, do this, sell that, go down there and do this, and we'll, you know, you'll have all that in a couple of weeks, like. Because I've, se- I've seen it, though, even down the country, near where I'm from, like, there, it's on the, the main Waterford Limerick Road, you know, and you're seeing lads, you're going, man, you drive a tractor three days a week. How the fuck are you driving a brand new Range Rover? Come here and tell you something. You've, you know got, I mean? you've, got, come here, you've got the criminal assets bureau that's there. I mean, surely the Jesus, if a guard is looking at a fella who's getting social welfare fair every week, that's going around in designer clothes, with plenty of money, and driving a golf all line. Yeah. yeah. Something's not adding up. A 50 grand car. And I mean, like, you don't yeah, need yeah, yeah, to yeah. bring in Sherlock Combs to... To solve the crime of how he has that. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, for me, I think they should target all the small dealers. Because without the small dealers, it's gonna the big dealers can't operate. Yeah. Because they're the soldiers that are on the street, on the front line, pushing the product. Yeah. So if you've no one there to push the product, and they're all getting hit, and they can't go around in their golf GTAs, and their Balenciaga trainers, and the Rolex runners, they, they can't do it. Yeah. They can't operate, and they can't function. But well, I think more so for the guards and more so for the state, they think hit them at the top. Like, it's not working like that. Because there'll always be a fella I going to the top. I think you've got to go from the bottom. That's a valid and point. And the fellas yeah, from yeah. the bottom are easier. They're getting the ones at the top. Fucking right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's mad me saying that in next criminal. There's probably <laughs> blokes listening to that going, yeah, is that right? Get the bloke, get the plaguing comedian from Ballymun. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go to? How long were you in Were you in jail for? Prison, I should uh, say. The last, the last time I was in, I was in for... Um, my sentence was five and a half years, but I got a review after three and a half. Right. So I got extradited home from England. I was in England on the run, and um, I got took out of a pub in Stoke Newington. And it was it was a blessing in disguise because I thought initially when I got when I got um, nicked that was the end of my life. But little did I know, in hindsight, it was you know. It was the kick in the arse he needed. Like, yeah, was it? exactly. It definitely was. Like, you know, so I ended up in Brixton Prison for six weeks and then I got extradited home. I remember going through Heathrow and uh, getting onto the plane and the two guards waiting for me up to the top and I had a HMP prison bag. And I still have the jeans. The jeans, I think, are 26 waist. So, yeah, <laughs> right. I know. I couldn't even get one of the legs. <laughs> you were a whippet back then, yeah. yeah. Well, like, of course, you were on the like run. A, I was like a traveller's <laughs> greyhound on hunger streak. <laughs> You're and on the then, run, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, then I come home here and I got, I got I got five and a half years of review after three and a half. And I was clean when I come home because there was no drugs available for me where I was in, in Brixton. But then after a while, I started using again in prison. And um, I got out of prison then and, and I got sentenced in early 97 and I got out in 2001. And I got clean in 2001. Right. In, in prison. And what was... Was that drug-related charges as well? Yeah, they were drug-related. Yeah, possession with intent to supply, yeah. yeah. And Little I, did I, I know you were... Know, it was all for what, you. No, do you know what? It was and actually... You know, I don't mind sitting here and saying if it was mine, I go, look, it was mine. But it, it wasn't. I was I was holding for another fella and I was selling it for another fella. But come here. It's neither here nor there. What happened, what happened. I'm not dressing her up. Yeah. It was a, it's a drug offence. It's a class A drug. No matter what. The situation was about it. I was caught with, and that was it. So I had to go and do the time. I've been in prison before that. 18 months here and 12 months there and 6 months here, a few months on remand or whatever, like, you know. But I only always ever ended up in prison when I started using drugs. So I was never coming. So it was a direct correlation, so. Come here. Everyone in prison has one thing in, in common. They're all shit at crime. <laughs> 
Do you know what it's I mean? True, yeah. That's the truth. <laughs> Do you, know, to look do you know what I mean? They're that all shit, lads. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> bad career choice when you fucking think about it. Just the clever ones are out. They, they never go to prison. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's, it's the truth. <coughs> it's very, very true, like, you know. So, um, yeah, I ended up there and uh, I got clean. Then I asked the prison officer for help one day and I started going to these meetings. I started going to it. An anonymous 12 step program, and I just got a moment with the clarity. And I said, Look, I've, I need to get my life together, like you know, yeah. I, you know. And I've been in psychiatric hospitals when I was younger and tried to take my own life in an intensive care unit over in Hamilton in London. And kind of had you know, living on the streets and all that type of jargon that goes with, 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 with taking drugs. All the not yet's happened. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. wasn't one of these that went, oh, well, I wasn't that bad. I was that bad. Oh, you hit the rock bottom. I was, man. yeah. I, like, I'll, I'll show you a video when we finish the interview and I'll give you a look at me before. I, um, before, I actually have a, a mate of mine gave me a video the other week, Linda has it in, inside, of a, a, a drugs education program that I done while I was in the medical unit in Mount Joy. Right. And I am in a cruel state. But I got clean. I was on. A, I was in a program in there with ten of us. Was in it. And what drugs were? Was it every drug? Yeah. No. My, my, my main drug at the end of me using would have been heroin. Was it? Yeah. So. Oh, were you heroin. smoking that or injecting? No, I was injecting it. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Well, like I. I know. I mean, you can. You make allowances for fucking like a, you know a manky fag or something like that. But like, for the first one, you're going fuck. If I to inject this into myself. No, see, well, I started smoking first, like, so I wasn't, like, as if I went straight intravenous using, like, you know, I started smoking and it was kind of, you know, under Tim Ford and all that, and you never, and that's what I'm saying about the not yet. Yeah. We always kind of went, oh, no, we'd never use needles, and, you know, I'd be afraid of my <laughs> life, like, even going to the dentist nowadays, the minute I see a syringe, I'd be like, do you know what I mean, but 20 yeah. years ago, I'd be diving onto it, you know? <laughs> So um, it was just a it was a progression that kind of came with it, you know. And then, you know, all, all the all the stuff comes with the crime and the criminality and the haunting your family and stealing from your own family and all that stuff, you know. And homeless on the streets and living in hostels and just kind of get bouts along the way where you're going. This, you know, it's not meant to be like this. I know better than this because I, you know, the family I grew up in. You know, my mother and father liked to drink and that, but I mean, there was there was structure to a certain, yeah, 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 yeah. certain degree. And I, you know, and I was brought up well to, you know, I always had nice manners and I always kind of carried myself fairly well, like, you know. But uh, at, the, at the end of me years, and I was just, I was shattered, like I was just a shell of a man. I was stripped of me, you know, spiritually and mentally. I was, I was fucked, like, yeah. you know, and I just knew something had to give and... I got the opportunity to get clean and I went to the medical unit and, and I done a detox and then I went over to the training unit and uh, I was over there and, and, and then I got out and I and I started going to, to meetings and I got my life somewhat back in order and, you know, life started to happen. Yeah. Like, you know? Um, yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's well, thank fuck you had, because I mean, if you had a weaker constitution... You wouldn't. There's no way your brain would have went here. We need to get this together. You would just would have kept the foot to the floor, like yeah, you know, because yeah. there must there must been some inkling, some scratching from a, mm. from a good upbringing. Going, no, yeah. this isn't right. This isn't fucking right. Mm. Like, you me, know what I mean? Me, me sister, God rest her, would have been a great. She was a great help and great support, and always was. You know, through all the years, there was only me and her. Like I've no other brothers or sisters, and she was just always there for me and had me back. And even when I got out, I wasn't even meant to be living in Ballymun when I was barred. From Where you, how the fuck did they bury you from Ballymun? Barred from, but look, because I'd uh, antisocial behaviour, it was part of my conditions that I don't enter Ballymun, like that I stay away from it. Right. So my sister kind of took me in and, and put me staying, because she had no way to fucking stay when I got out. Like, yeah, of course. So I stayed with her, and, and, and she kind of nurtured me and looked after me and pushed me to go to meetings and made sure I'd done, you know, done the right things and all that. And um, yeah, life just started to take off then. Because I remember the amount of fucking people that. No matter where I gig, the amount of people that know you. It's just, it's just <laughs> what was Willie? And everybody's like, you guys fucker. And I'm like, which Willie did you know? Like, yeah, which and I don't, one? I don't want to know. But I was in, I remember I was in London one time and I, had about, I was going to a show with a, with a mate. He had to finish up work and I had about two hours to kill near, um, 
Oh, fucking. It was one in King's Cross. And oh, I was you... walked into, I said, I'm going for a bite to eat in this pub, having an old pint or two. Like, and I was just chatting away to the guy behind the counter. He was asking something about horses, and I don't know anything about horses. But he picked up my accent. He goes, That's a very horsey sound. He goes, Are You from Tipperary? You're man, English guy. I went, mean, Yeah, yeah. He goes, Do you know? So, and he, I knew everybody was talking about, but I oh, didn't fucking knew nothing about. Next thing, this big bloke looks up from behind his newspaper. He's like, Hey, all right. All right. He big, just a big fucking unit. You knew his right, buildings, right. and he comes sidling over. He's, and I was gig, I was doing a couple of gigs that week. Like, he's what are you up to? And they, a gang of them came, but his name, his name, he just went by the name Big Jim. Right. And uh, within seconds, he was like, Joe Willie White, go and away. He fucking loves you. Go away. Like, Tell me your life story. <laughs> You're joking. And he was just known as Big Jim, and he was a big fucking Jim. But right. he was he knew everything about and it was just one of many that I've just gone. Was he from the country? He was, yeah. Was yeah. he from Carlo? He he was somewhere like that, yeah. And he got a big huge head in him. He's Massive like fucker. Like. I know him well. Massive fuck. Paws I walked like with a the fella. Shovel, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I know him well. How you talk like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The whole pub but could hear the fucker. story about him. He's a smashing scaffold and he's only gone back to live in London the last few years. I know him big Jim, I know him very well. It's mad you should say that. But we were scaffolding one of the, the life boys off the end, the pool bag, as you come out, there's a green, as you go down to the end of it, there's a green, like, big life boy. Right. We built a scaffold on it. And he f- um, he was getting, so we were getting out, and you had to time yourself, because the boat was coming in with the swell. Oh, shit, right. And he fell. What, between them? Yeah, yeah, he fell, but, and lucky enough, he got out the side, because if he'd have hit, if the boat would have come in, I'd and, s- you know, he'd have sunk the boat. <laughs> <laughs> And knock the bleeding Louis house down, you know. But I know, I actually, I know, I know the fella you're talking about. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was what he was, he, oh, fucking hell, he was, I, I like, I couldn't get away from him then. He wanted to buy me pints galore. So he's a I, lovely, he was a lovely, lovely fella. fella. Like He had a shop down in Carlo called XXXL. He sold big clothes for big people. Did he? And you can understand yeah, why you can see the size of him, like, himself, you know? like, Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That's but, crazy. The man you never told me that before either. I, 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 uh, big Jim, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I run into you, like, or whatever. Or did I get a chance? Because you wouldn't. Crazy, any isn't it? We run into each other in comedy clubs, but you yeah. never get proper conversations in comedy clubs. Like, it's all like, well, how are you getting on? And it's just rubbish old talk because you're yeah, kind of yeah, half, yeah, half yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah, the job yeah. you got to do. Yeah. And is the boss man around? Or, you know, these kind of fucking things, like, you know. Yeah. But, but um, because but still to this day, like, you're one of, I'd say, if not the most popular laughter lounge. Acts. People just fucking. There's just. Uh, yeah, yeah. A, well, I have to say, come here, Peter. Peter O'Matney has been. He's been. Um, since day one, since I started playing there, you know, he's been. He's been amazing. Like he's a great fella. And even when my sister passed away, and that he was, he was there. Like, you know, I kind of don't look at him as as the gaffer when I go in there. Yeah. I think some places you get you you, you develop a rapport and you develop um, a relationship with pe- people, and Peter would be. You know, be definitely one of those yeah, people, like yeah, you know, because yeah. he's a straight shooter, like isn't oh, he? Oh, he like? is. Come here, Pete. There's, 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 there's two sides to everyone. There's two sides to Peter, like yeah. you know. But come here, there's definitely more good in the fella than there is bad. You know, you know. And I'm not, and I don't mean bad, like as in bad. But I mean, he's a type of fella that sticks to his guns. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, and I respect the fella for that. And um, yeah, he, he's a great bloke. And in, in my opinion, at the, at the moment, it's the, it's the best club in the country. He's I done an it. amazing job with the place. So like, when you, you know? watch how it moves like a well-oiled machine, like doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. They'd nearly take the drink for you. Like the, the amount, like just the turnover yeah. in the breaks alone, you're going, holy shit, this mm. is how you run it. Like, you know. Yeah, he does. He he, run, he runs it with uh, precision and perfection. Like, you know, and I, and I tip me hat to the fella. I, I wish there was more Peter O'Matney's in the country, yeah. really, you know. Yeah, 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 because he took a place. Like, the I'm brand not... deserves to take off. He should have one in Limerick. He should have one in Cork. And he should have one up the north. I know he know? offered, to, I think he, he, he'd, he'd offered to buy one or two places, all right, pretty much blank check back in the day, like, mm. but it didn't happen. Like, And he had one in Waterford and he had one in Belfast. He did. So I played the two of them, yeah. Yeah, and then, I don't know. Had, was Something happened it? with a receivership and the one in Belfast. Uh, they, they owned the whole place down there. Right. Um, the Odyssey there, and that got whipped from underneath him, out, out of his control, I think. And the one in Waterford, I don't know what happened. It I remember Kieran was the guy that was running it, a uh, nice fella, and, and, and I don't know what happened there. You know, I, I, I genuinely don't like. So I'm gonna make up something. <laughs> so I don't have a clue what happened. Because I played it, and it was still the like forum, the, yeah. The old posters were kind of still there. It's like, oh, this was that fucking like, all oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's weird, like you know that. You'd see a place you'd think it should work, like you know what I mean. 
somebody who has that infrastructure but then I suppose you can't control it when it's out of sight it's out of mind because Peter's in the other place the whole time like you know what I mean yeah. so I suppose you can't you can't legislate for a place being be, uh, but going back to the very beginning the, of stand up comedy you were am I right was your first gig with uh, Join the Hood yeah very first gig yeah it was with Join the Hood with Des my very first gig that I ever done in stand up comedy was to a sell out crowd in Vicar Street there was like a night on, I know, yeah. Fuck. And everyone else didn't even know I was on. So there was like the, the likes of Deirdre O'Kane, Dara O'Brien, Des Bishop, Jason Bourne, they were on at this kind of big um, show that was on and thing. And Des says to me, look, because Des was emceeing it. He yeah. says, I'm going to bring it on. He says, I want you to come out and do five to seven minutes. I know you just rocked Let's go back to the beginning here, because anybody listening to this, like, we'll go, what the fuck is he talking? How yeah. did that happen? So like, I was doing a was program with Des Bishop's Join the Hood. Basically, the whole program was actually meant to be about me. The oh, program, was it? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And right. I, don't, I don't say this an awful lot because I don't... It was meant to be about me coming out of prison and embarking on the world of stand-up comedy. That's okay. what it was meant to be about. So me and Des met and um, I just opted not to do it. Um, how, did get, how did he get a hold of you? Like, how did this... Well, I was at, I was at a place where he was at one time and I was doing an auction. Uh, okay, we were at right, this thing yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I... And I was pretty funny doing the auction. I was yeah. taking the piss out of people. And he said to me after that, he said, do you ever think about doing stand-up? And I says, no, didn't he? He says, you're a very funny man. He says, you're very witty. Maybe you should. So then over time, through a mutual friend of mine that knew him, we got an introduction, we got a me. And um, this was the idea. So it was a six-part series about me getting out of prison and embarking on the world of stand-up. Right. But I kind of had to look at the bigger picture and know that... You know, it, it would have delved into why I was in prison. Oh, it would have delved, and it was too early on for me. But it w- well, I knew I'd have, I'd have ended up in the late late, and I'd have ended up on all the radio shows and all that. And I knew as well that it would have been a flash in the pan, and also that I'd have been branded as the criminal ex drug addict yeah. comedian, and I didn't want that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can totally get so that. So as much as a kind of a hope, me, I just went, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, like, and. Um, so we didn't do it, and I just says, "Look, there's a van else comes up that you think, you know." And then, you know, about a year or two later, this joy in the hood thing come up, and he was doing the pilot in Ballymun, and I went like everyone else for the audition thing, and I got it, and we done the pilot, and then through that, all these other ones was done. So basically, come into an area, a disadvantaged area, and he done comedy workshops. And then at the end of it, you went up and you performed in the local community centre or the local hall in front of all your family and your friends. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's the way it was. And so you... there was the me and Eric Lawler were in that one. Yeah, and there was a Cork one then as well. Like, that's right, Kevin there was a Goldsmith Cork one. Kevin one. Goldsmith was in that, yeah. Then there was one in Galway, which Martin Beans Ward was in. Was there? Yeah, there Fucking was Beans down Ward in Tume, is... yeah. It's doing it that long? Yeah, yeah. Right. And then there was one in Belfast. Fucking hell. Yeah, so there you go, like... Um, but it was great. It was a great platform. And I have to say, Des was very, very good to me in the early days. We got to play in some of the best venues in the country. I got to play down in the Marquee in Cork in front Jeez. of 3,000 people. I got to play Vicar Street. I got to play Cork Opera House. I, all these amazing venues. Unbelievable. And uh, he kind of gave us, you know, when when our wings kind of grew, then he kind of just let us out of the bleeding pigeon loft, so to speak. <laughs> Get out the to comedy loft. Just- and we went out, and the first gig I got paid for was the Full Moon Theatre down in Cork. Oh, yeah, yeah, Me yeah, and yeah. Eric went down, and they gave us 50 quid each, and I thought I got six numbers on the National Lottery. The pain we were break dancing like, yeah. on the street, like, you know, so it kind of all started from that, so it was great. It was great crack, yeah. Yeah, it is ridiculous when you think about it, that they'll pay you for jokes. It is, so. look, it's, it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's mad, like, because I live a kind of a life where... It's like I walk during the day because comedy isn't full time at the moment, you know. And then it's like I live 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 this uh, superhero kind of life. That <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I become this comedian, like do you know what I mean. And it's like I remember even one day, and I, and I don't mean to be dropping names on the floor. I was having lunch with Eddie Izzard. I'll pick John, that up there. And that's John, yeah, 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 and John Bishop, um, down in in, in a big uh, arena at the Echo Arena in, in Liverpool. I was sitting there having lunch with the two and having a cup of tea and, and I kind of saying to myself, this is just so weird. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Monday morning, you've two scapulin planks on your shoulder. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You've a super boys saying, you're right the fuck, get that, you know, and you're going yeah. on. Who's with, who the 
well, fuck who you are with the weekend. He said, can Eddie is art scaffold, can he? <laughs> oh, no. Goes, it's well, bizarre, fuck, isn't it? Well, fuck him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that is, yeah, that's the truth of it. Yeah, that is the truth of it when it just... Yeah, it, look, it's, it's, it's mad. Like, and there's it's, no explaining it to people, like... No, you, there's not, like... And, and you, like... I mean, the likes of comedy bleeding gods like that. I mean, look, when you look at the lineup that's going on now for Sean Cox on... January the tenth. Yeah. That there's uh, that John Bishop pulled this gig together for yeah. like, and you're not gonna get a, a, a gig like that ever again to happen. Like, no, no, no. I mean, you've Des Bishop, you've you've Dara Breen, Dara Breen, you've Tommy Tiernan, you've Jason Bourne, you've Michael McIntyre. Yeah, Look, Michael I mean, McIntyre. Jesus like. Christ! Arena su- tour selling Michael McIntyre. Like, like. Come here, you know, get your fucking hands off me. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's. And I went and I got a couple of tickets, so I was fortunate enough, like, you know. And it's not one of them gigs you could ask to be on the guest list for because it's for a really good yeah, cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I seen some of the footage of the guy the weekend over in Liverpool, Sean, Sean Cox, yeah. and I just thought, he could be fucking anybody's dad, like. Unbelievable. Like he's, he could be anyone's he's my, dad. He's my mechanic's brother-in-law. And, like, he wasn't right for a long time. But uh, just even talking about it, because they were good friends. Yeah. But he was like, what? Like, it Devastating, was, isn't it? Unbelievable! Like. A smack of a buckle off one of them fucking fans in the back of the head, and look what it done to him. Yeah, un fucking believable. But I mean, I mean, they, 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 according to him, they don't have the real facilities here in Ireland. Unfortunately, they don't like they don't for yeah. for somebody in that nick. Like you know what I mean? Because we don't have the population to justify these things either. Like mm. you know, you can shout and roar all day, but they've ninety billion people in the UK. Like so. Yeah, I seen Jordan Henderson hugging him the other day in a bit of footage on a couple of the Liverpool players, and I just thought. It was just so nice, like, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, that, like, And it's like anything in the entertainment industry. I mean, Liverpool are, are, are an entertainment yeah. club as well. Yeah, yeah, Without the people that come to see you, you can't survive in it. Yeah. And he is one of them people, like. Yeah. So you've got to just show them as much respect as they show yeah, you. Yeah, and I get, I get In a vibe. real humbling kind of way, you know? I saw that video and I got the vibe too. It was like, oh, yeah, this, in fairness, that doesn't seem like it's for the cameras. They, like, yeah, of course. You I know, just, I, just, like, I, got, I was actually touched by it. Yeah. You know? I actually felt, Jesus Christ. And at the same time, I was kind of thinking, he, 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 he could, he could be, he belongs to, he belongs to someone, the man, like, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Went out to watch a game of football. And ends up in a fucking wheelchair. Yeah, fuck. You know? Like, yeah. But, yeah. Are you a sports fan? I wouldn't be big, big sports fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. Like, you know, I've yeah. been over loads of times. and um, But the likes of, no, I wouldn't say I'm mad sports now. But you keep a keen eye, as, as I do on the fight world as well. Like, the fight, yeah, you know, the, well, I would be into the boxing. I'm also the boxing, not really big on MMA. I, was, I think with all the circumstances of events with Connor and all that, I just. I got a real bitter taste in my mouth, you yeah, know, and I just yeah. kind of went, come here, do you know what, money will buy you a lot of things, Tom, but I won't buy you a fucking class. No, no. If you're a prick, you're a prick. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You can't erase that. No. Well, do you I know mean, what I mean? You go back, what, five, six episodes and go to the absolute gentleman. Any of the, to be fair, I mean, not to tear them all, like you, you take somebody like I've had, I've had Richie Kiley on, I've had Will Flory on, who's, Will Flory will be a friend from home, like, as well, and he's an MMA fighter, like, but even he, he would consider himself a martial artist first, and any of that like he, he said it on the podcast he was like and ain't that fucking flashy shirt wearing fucking sunglasses tattooing your chest shit that these lads are doing he says like they think they're a gangster yeah. you're supposed to be a martial artist you carry yourself like a gent come here and I tell you if you're you know a role I mean? model if you're a role model to the children in the area and yeah. kids aspire to be you and you start the fucking beard culture in the yeah. country <laughs> Fucking do you, beard culture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because like, he did, like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Top he started nuts. a beard culture yeah. in a country, like, where, where, you know, beards, in my opinion, were for people that were doing crusties or bleeding <laughs> hipsters <laughs> or homeless yeah. or just hadn't got the money for a fucking razor. <laughs> but all of a sudden, everyone wants a beard, like, and you're kind of going, and people aspired to be this man and looked up to him. And it just all toned, like. But tattoo artists made a fucking fortune out yeah, of him. Yeah, just come here, listen, he, he, look at Come here, I take my hat off to the bloke for what he done to the sport. But when I seen what he became after, I just kind of went. Pfft. Yeah, but you, Willie, here's the thing. You know, right? You know, you have to with the mi- like the minor successes that we have both had in whatever we've done. Regardless, in the public light of people who know you mm. and all the rest, of you, you have to carry yourself a certain way. If you go- if you want to maintain that mantle, if you want to earn that kind of money, and if you only- can't stay grounded with money, Tom. 
Don't yeah. don't try to get money because and we even before we were we fired up the podcast we were talking about a certain now maybe ill advised chap who was making a colossal bank mm. but didn't keep his fucking between the ditches yeah and if you're going to earn that you got to be whiter than white if you want oh, to yeah. earn that kind of bank because everybody's out to get you of course they you know are, what I mean yeah. like everyone will look for the cracks but the gas thing about it that is if I do got a load of money tomorrow. I'm fucking out there for my past. I don't really give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, you want to know about me? Have a listen to Tom's podcast. Yeah. And write about that. Because yeah. people know who I am and where I'm from, like, you know? So, I mean, if there is any bleeding multi-billionaires that are listening to this and want to give me a couple of million <laughs> and say, I'm telling fucking lawyers, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you, you, you can't, you've got to keep your two feet on the ground, especially when you've got a following like that. And you've got kids that are like, you know, looking up to you. Yeah. And, wanna be, and then they see the stuff in the paper, like, and they're going, Jesus, you're crushing me kids' dreams, like. They aren't, they aren't, because I think people can see through, like, there's, people are happy to ignore some shit too, like, you know, they're going, ah, no, he's, you know, and all he Look did. Look at his old man, like. Yeah. Giving out to you, go boss, because the change doesn't go right in the pockets of his suit. Yeah. Fuck off. You know, you were dri- you know I mean? driving a Toyota Camry a couple of fucking years ago, exactly, like, relaxed but no for a taxi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get fucking real will you do you know what I'm it's saying like, like and yeah. now he's going around bleeding doing Leary Harbour in a yacht yeah. will you fuck off yeah 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 yeah. I mean if you give a bleeding monkey a razor and ever a fucking shave <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that actually do you yeah. know what I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah 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 <coughs> oh, I don't know you know it's, you it's, it is it's, you can't buy breeding no you can't you, you, you're either a nice person or not you know, money, come here, the money is definitely going to change it. It's definitely going to change it. Everybody thinks that happiness begins and ends with money. I mean, happiness is just a state of mind, like. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's homeless people that wake up on the streets in the morning that can be happy. As much as the person that wakes up in a fucking 15 bedroom mansion that has billions and it's isn't fuck, fucking happy. I, I'll tell you a good one. When we were doing Demo and Ivor, right, this is a real fucking, I, I remember, like, I lost, I made a few quid during the boom. No, no, I didn't really. I was just on a really good wage. Right. But I was a spare. I was like right. 24 years of age, earning money that a fucking 54-year-old yeah. should be earning. Like. Yeah, But lost it all. Lost me bollocks. Went deep into debt, the whole lot. So my brain kind of broke a small bit. Like, right. Came back from it, whatever, thanks to my parents and all the rest of it. But um, immediate, almost a zen-like thing came over me going, oh yeah, all that shit means nothing. Doesn't. Means nothing. Because I was a miserable motherfucker when I had money. And I, now that I've... Ju- you know, ticking along. Industrial yeah. wage, we'll call what I'm yeah. making at the minute. I came in the other evening, like I was saying, after a gig. And the fucking dog was delighted to see me. The wife was delighted to see me. Yeah. And the baby was delighted to see me. You're like, what the fuck else? Do you want to flash? And you know what? And they didn't know what you earned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Nor did they give like, a fuck. Like, yeah, you know? exactly. But I remember we were doing, when we were filming Damon Ivor, we were in one of the, we were in this house. It was to be technically my character's house, but the man owned the two houses where we were using Ivor and your man's house. And he owned these two fucking houses. And it's, astronomical place in Box Rock and this poor old bastard I used to call him a poor old bastard because I felt sorry for him after about the fifth day he was wandering around and all the film crew were everywhere and he was delighted to have him there because you knew well the wife was long gone from him probably just a bit of company he was fucking miserable he, he told me I said what do you make your money at if you don't mind me asking because he, he used to he'd be half steamed by 12 o'clock in the day drinking wine wandering around stepping over cables and how did he yeah, there yeah. and I was like well, what, what's your fucking story with these two monstrous mansions on and he says well, from our sins self made man from uh, I won't say where he was from no, well, he was from Dublin the, uh, not a well well off working class part May, sold his business five pre, five years previous for 190 million and had nothing to do now the Jeez. wife had fucked off and maybe I don't know caught him with a bird or something I don't know but he was this poor bastard was what I'm saying is he had potentially more he might have 200 million in the bank and he didn't have a fucking dog happy he didn't have a baby happy or a wife happy he just came he was just wandering around his home, house fucking miserable all the money in the world he was there to me like like this is one of the few times I should have taken him up and he goes if you ever you know you ever caught now you should come and see now and saying that he was steaming in the middle of the we day we dropped too. down after this we fucking hours. should actually yeah, just rock up <laughs> he's probably dead and gone do you know probably is like they've come in and tell you something Tom there's no tow bars in the back of a hearse nah nah you're fucking 100% right unless you're living in Cavan yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking horse yeah. the back. no but you know what I mean like, yeah. we're all going in the same size hole that's the bleeding that's yeah. the reality yeah. of it at the end of the day and I mean you're weighed up when you when you go into church they don't have a list of what you have they tell you who you were like yeah you know and, and the crowd usually portrays who you were you know that you were loved that you you know 
that you were honest, that you were kind, you were hard work and you were all these things. You loved your family and you know, you loved the people I around actually, you. I, like, I, you know? I really, for the, not to sound morbid, but I actually, it was a very warm funeral, your father's funeral. Because oh, you were stop. fucking banging out jokes up there. Like, <laughs> we're like, myself and Jason Byrne were looking at across at each other like going, he's a fucking funny bastard. <laughs> you were throwing out jokes there, left, right and centre about yeah. him and your man. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It made everybody so... But it was the truth. It was, but it's mad as well because my, my dad, that, that, one of the funniest things I said was... Uh, my father's usually used to getting carried out of places, <laughs> not into them, you know? Yeah. And it's mad, I'm actually doing a gig for the Irish Undertakers Federation on I Saturday stop, night. I swear not. to God. Brilliant. The, the girl that buried my father and buried my sister, who was a lovely, lovely person, and we became really good mates. Uh, she, her name is Edwina Fitzgerald. She, they have a funeral uh, place up in, in Lusk up there. And um, she's the... She's the president of the Irish Undertakers Federation and they have this big dinner every year. Right. And she booked me last year for it. She, oh, she says, Black listen, tie, she yeah. says, um, will you come down? She says, do a half an hour. She says, no, we'll, you know, we'll look after you. Come here. Undertakers have plenty of fucking money. It's recession proof. It's one of them it's, things, it's you know. It's the perfect thing. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Like, and uh, come here, she's a lovely girl. So at least if I die on stage, you'll be in good hands. <laughs> and anyway, you know, so I'm going down Saturday night and be a bit of crack and, and come here to lovely people. She asked me if I want to stay the night and have dinner and wow. the whole operation. Just, well, I'm in Cork tomorrow night and then I've got to get straight back from Cork and then at long Saturday. So I'm just going to go down and do it and, and, and get back. But it's, yeah, come here. It's it's knocking on the door for us all. Like, you know, nothing is nothing is for granted. Yeah. Nothing at And all you know yourself how many times you, well, especially you, how many times you've sidestepped it. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, oh, come here. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be here, like, genuinely. Yeah, I would well imagine, like. I shouldn't, I should be, I, I've been in some situations where I could have been fucking murdered, like, you know. Yeah. I was in a situation in London where a fella pulled out a handgun in a house I was in and I just went, talk about fucking, the, the sensation Jesus. of warm urine running down my legs. Like, <laughs> I well fucking um, imagine. And I seen a fella getting murdered in town outside my mum's there. It was his, it was his anniversary. Now he's four years dead. I seen a fella murder him with a shotgun. Fuck. Yeah, blew his head off. Yeah, seen it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So um, I I know the value of life, and I know how precious life is. And when I seen that chap doing, I just, you know, when I was telling me mum, I said someone's had to get murdered outside. Me mum was like, "Fuck off." Me mum's real dope, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> which which fuck off to anyone that's listening to this from a middle class area means. Go away, I don't believe you. Yeah. It's, it can mean, it's a metaphor for yeah. lots of different stuff, like, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, the fella blew his fucking head off for a shotgun and I was forced on the scene, I ran down as well to see, you know, was he still alive? Even though I kind of half knew that he wasn't, like, you know? And when I got down and um, I seen the fucking state he was in and and, and where, they mur- where, he, where he got murdered was between a tree and a wall so they couldn't even put a tent over him ah, for the Jesus. night. So they just threw a bit of our oil cloth over a lino on top of him. That's, and I was yeah. staying in my mum's that night and I just I couldn't sleep. Like, I love my mum was inside That's drinking whiskey like, and I was kind of going, I'm lying here in bed and 40 feet down on the ground beside me is a, a, a young man, 23 years of age. Fuck. He's been fucking brutally murdered. Like. It's crazy, isn't it? In the blink mm. of an eye, gone. 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 And they, I mean, speaking of dying, we've all done fucked up gigs oh, and stop. mental gigs. I'm going to tell you the one that... I want to hear it. I know you, o- you will always have a juicy one for me. I mean, because you do, you do the prison, oh, the prison gigs all the time. Like, would you, I've heard yeah. it. I've never done one, but I'd love to well, do it. Well, it's mad that Andrew Maxwell is going on. I'm a celebrity. And we done a gig with Andrew Maxwell and the joy. He was doing a program and I brought him in. But the auditorium where the gigs go on in there yeah. at the time was under renovation. So we had to bring him in on the A-Wing wreck. So right. we done a gig on A Wing Wreck. So we brought his dad in, and all the fucking lads is all there banging up heroin and fucking smoking. Stop. And Andrew's gone. What the fuck is going on here? Like this is, <laughs> this is it. This is prison. Like, this is real deal. He says you're fucking joking. I says no. He says and this is where you were in this. I says yeah. Every day this goes on every day in here. Jesus. Blokes just there fucking syringes hanging out of arms and fucking his old man was traumatized. <laughs> That, that was a great gig. That, 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 I had a really good gig in there before I tell you about the gig that I died on my arse. Um, which I've died on my arse at a few gigs. But the one I'll always remember. First of all, I'll tell you about this one in Mount Joy. I went in with Neil Delamere and I went in with Janet Regan. And we done a gig in there. 
and there was a fella down the back who I knew because I, I emceed him because I know a lot of the lads yeah. <laughs> and it's all right for me you are the only person who would know all the lads yeah there was, it's all right for me to have a bit of banter and it's sad in a way because a lot of the lads are still there from when I was there not 20 years ago obviously I've been now a couple of times a couple, back of, again, like couple of them haven't a couple oh, of them are geez. still there from 20 years ago but anyway I've done this gig and there's a fella down the back and he's roaring up and I know him well and I says to him do you know what Mickey I says do you know what your problem is says, and I'm just realising it now I'm realising it your problem is I says why you're in here I says is that like now you could never keep your fucking mouth shut he says you walk into a police station I says they just got a typewriter give you a cup of tea you start talking and before you know it you're in there in five fucking years <laughs> right so I'm all the, the lads are, are having it. a laugh now I know the fella I've grew up with him right and, and the fella is a fucking lunatic right <laughs> and just as I said and that's the reason I, I, I says and that's where you can keep your mouth shut right on cue the minute I say that the door opens and a prison officer walks in who about 20 years ago was pulled in for the death of another prison officer a, ma- a female prison officer oh. who got murdered right it was like the timing was impeccable. Oh my I says, God. now here's a man who can keep his mouth shut. Oh my God! And the whole jail, like oh folks in prison, fuck. blues went mental. And Delamere and Jarlett are looking at each other going, what the fuck Two is Two unbelievably going on middle class lads too. Right, like, right, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. going on here? <laughs> the screws, the prison officers are looking at each other going, oh, he walks in. I goes, here's a man now that can keep his mouth shut right on cue. But that is beautiful, though. He just gets taken in. I oh, says, for a fucking, uh, a, a terrible crime, I says, keeps his mouth shut, doesn't ask for methadone, everything is grand. <laughs> he says, doesn't get charged and still has his fucking job. I oh, says, and look at you. That place is gone ballistic at this stage. I said, ladies and gentlemen, keep the round of applause going for your next act. <laughs> and I brought on Neil Delamere and he ripped the place apart as well. But after the gig, Neil and Jarlett were going, what the f- what, what just, and when I told him, you know, Delamere, Delamere goes, that was fucking genius. Yeah. He says, that was so good. Well, he would have been, yeah, he'd yeah, appreciate he says, that. Well, right. how couldn't you, you know? With the gig I died on me whole, I was gigging in Club Cuba, which was uh, fair play to how you going, uh, Jerry Mallon. It's Jerry Mallon's gig yes, down in yeah, Galway, yeah, 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 which yeah, is a great yeah. gig. I love Jerry. I've always loved Jerry. Jerry Jerry's a great fella, right? Most Galway man that ever yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. For pleasure. Uh, <laughs> for pleasure. I watched that. Uh, <laughs> that's any time I'm texting him. At the end, it was for pleasure. Yeah. For pleasure. So I was, I was sitting there the other morning watching the sun come up, and uh, I don't usually give him ecstasy tablets, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a great, what a great joke, right? So, so I'm doing his gig. And I had I done this gig. I was down there with Jason Bunn and ripped. Had a great gig. After the gig, this guy comes up to me, a fella called Mike Quigley, who's a businessman from Galway and two of his mates. We think you're brilliant. Blah blah blah. A mate of ours is having a fortieth birthday party. Would you be interested in doing it? And no. I was like, No, not yeah. really. He goes, This is when the boom was on. He says, Me name your price. Fuck. So we went. I said, Are you serious? He says, Yeah. Listen, I'm a businessman down here. I said, I have plenty of money. These two lads are mates of mine, they have their own businesses. It's for a mate of ours, he's 40. How much do you want? I gave him a price. He didn't even argue, he went, right. And you and me just went, fuck him. Yeah, exactly, as we do all yeah, the time, fuck. right? Wish I'd doubled that. So anyway, it was down in uh, Sligo, I think it's called the Golden Sands is the name of the hotel. Okay, it's a beautiful right. Ennish grown golf courses on the back of it. Ah, so yes, I play yeah, a bit yeah. of golf. Yeah. And they says, come down, you can play golf for us, we'll have a bit of food in the afternoon. We'll book you a room and do the gig and we'll give you the money. And this, since then, I've never taken money before a gig. So before I done the gig, you might give me the fucking envelope, which would have oh, choked the Falabella horse. Yeah. And I put it into my back pocket. Bad luck. And I went up and I've never, to that day, even the girl I'm doing the gig for, out the Irish Undertaker says to me the other day, give me your bank account details. And I went... Don't ever pay a bunny mum man before he's done the fucking job. For yeah. you. So I said, I'll get it off you yeah, one day. Yeah, I yeah. trust you. And uh, if I die before then, just stick it in the coffin with me or whatever. <laughs> so I goes down and um, I was scheduled to do a half an hour. And yeah. I got up on the stage and the place was packed. And I died the death of a thousand deaths. And I swear to God, the minutes seemed like hours. I was drinking the water. 
The water, it felt like I was drinking sand. My <laughs> mouth was bone dry. Um, I, I started to panic. I, 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 I couldn't get that. Oh, like? I don't know what it was. Nobody obviously expected a comedian, obviously. No, I think it was that thing. Or oh, he's from Dublin and he thinks he's funny. Nobody oh. laugh at this fella. Fuck. And I was looking at Mike Crowley who booked me and give me... Um, Mike Quigley who'd give me the money for the gig. And I just started going red and I was all over the place. And I'd say I was about 15 minutes in. Now, I had pre-warned him. Yeah. I told him, I says, this is either going to go two ways. I says, one, I'm going to do in me hole. Yeah. I says, or two, I'm going to do okay. I says, now, do you understand that before you bring me down here to do this gig? He says, I do. I says, right, that's grand. So I'd done about 15 minutes and I wrapped her up and I think probably three people clapped. Oh, I was probably Jesus. the fucking bar staff. Oh, boy. Jesus. And the minute I got off, the music. Pain in my on, chest. The music, the band were waiting. Oh. And uh, the minute the music with the first drum beat was hit, everyone got up on the dance floor. So I was standing there with Mike <laughs> and I went, I says, Well, I did tell you. He says, You weren't fair. You weren't fucking wrong, were you? He says, <laughs> He says, Die on your hole. He says, We were nearly ringing the fucking Undertakers for you. So he says, Look, I'm just going to fly up to the room. I'm going to get. Have a shower and I'm gonna get changed and I'll be back down. I got up to the room, they didn't know what room I was in. Yeah. I took my phone off. I got up the next morning, I was forced at breakfast at seven o'clock. I got the breakfast into me and I fucking hoytailed it back to Dublin. <laughs> I bet you fucking but did. I'll never forget that gig. Yeah. Never. Yeah, I did one for the Garda College and it was as long those fucking similar lines. It was probably more ruthless than that because oh, they just, oh my God. But to banish the fucking Typical bad Typical guards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd, well, they didn't like, oh, for love of fuck. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another time. We have about it's about a two hour story. Jeez. But um Happier Times. You are an award winning actor. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Tell us about I know, that. yeah. Wow, that's mad, yeah. I um I won Best Performer at the Dublin Fringe Festival there about um two months ago. Phenomenal. So I do 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 <laughs> Phenomenal. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you couldn't resist it. You couldn't resist it. No. So, I got involved. How the fuck did you I'll win it, Will? I'll, I'll, tell, no, I'll tell you what happened. Right? Not these saying you don't two, deserve to win a big, but you so don't fit, fit guys, the bill. No, these two, I don't. I don't That's, fit the bill. And when I went in... I'll never win it. Because you know what? I'll tell you what happened. The, the, the programme... These guys got in touch with me via Twitter. Yeah. They were in doing the research for this play, which was called The Examination. So they were doing the research in Mountjoy Prison. They had a professor from UCD involved, a criminologist called Dr. Catherine Cox. And there was loads of stuff that had going on in the background before they come round to me. Yeah. So they were talking to the music teacher in Mountjoy Prison, who was a guy called Jerry Hendricks. Right. Who's an amazing um, person, first and foremost. is an amazing guitarist and an amazing musician. And his story is one of tragedy that kind of turned into bleeding. A, a great story. His sister used to go out one of the lads out of the Miami show band. Oh, Jesus, right. Yeah, and he got, you know what happened to the Miami yeah. show band? He, he got murdered up in the north. And he got his guitar. Jerry was younger than this fella. Yeah, man, the guitar was given to him. So right. he learned how to play. And he's played with everyone. He's played with Andrew Strong, Rob Strong. He's oh, an amazing, yeah. amazing fella. So they were talking to him and they were saying, we're looking for someone to do this play with. Yeah. Is there anyone off the top of your head that you would recommend or who you would think could do this? And he says, there is. He says, there's a fella that was in here a few years ago. He says, and I'll never forget him. He says, I actually done a video with him. He says, I'm going to show you the video. And I done a song called Bright Lights of the City. Yeah. And it was, a, it was for the Barrettstown gang. All right, yeah, yeah. And, and it was uh, filmed in around Temple Bar and it's me playing a guitar and singing this song, you know. And it's about homeless people. And me and me mate Paddy is in it. It was great, like, you know. And he showed them the video. He says, him, he says. He's a fella called Willie White, he says. He's a great singer, he says. Um, great story, he says. He says, and I don't know, there's just something about him. He says, he's a comedian at the moment. And one of the lads goes, oh, I know, I've seen him before. He says, well, if I was going to tell you to go and get anyone to do the piece, which is, he says, he says, he's got a great story. Yeah. He says, go and see him. So these guys got on to me via Twitter. Now your man said he'd seen me at an open um, 12-step meeting years before. See, right. open meetings, you can bring, anyone can go to an open meeting. So you don't have to be an addict or an alcoholic to go to an open meeting. So you could bring your son or you could bring someone or go with someone to give them a bit of support. Yeah. 
So your man went to this meeting and he said, I'll never forget you. He says, because a fella was shared and saying, oh, for me, you know, I thought it was the Fonz and all that. He says, and after he shared, you shared and gone. And went, yeah, I thought it was the Fonz as well. <laughs> well it wasn't fucking happy days for me. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so he contacted me uh, through Twitter. And yeah. he just says, hi, my name is uh, Phelan Cannon. I'm from a production company called Broken Talkers. Am I doing this? Thing, we were wondering is there any chance if you'd like to get involved could you come in and see us so yeah. I went in went into the fruit markets they had a little office I sat down I met the two of them Gary Keegan and Phelan Cannon they're called Broken Talk because they do very left wing kind of stuff yeah, but it's okay. all real stuff none of it is fabricated it's all real stories they've done a song called um, Boy Blue which was about the Undertaker and Leather oh, Frack. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And it was, you know, it's it's that kind of thing. Yes. So I went in, they told me what they were doing. He said, would you be interested in coming on board? He said, it's a one-man play. And I went, yeah. I said, I'd love to do it. He says, right, leave it with us. So through the jigs and the wheels, we kept in touch. And I went in then. So it was initially going to be a one-man piece. So I was recording my audio to speak to and speak back. And it wasn't working. So Gary got involved. The other guy who it aspired was an ex-victim of crime. Right. So what it turned out was, is I'm an ex... It's about mental health in the prison service and it's about mental health. But he's an ex-victim of crime. I'm an ex-criminal. And I tell my story and he tells his story. And it's fucking... It's, come here, it's an amazing piece. Tommy Tiernan came to see her over in Edinburgh and he was... He was blown away by it. I brought right. the CP or out of the bankers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Peter cried his eyes out after he couldn't stop crying. It's Peter... Uh, Peter Bourne. Bourne. Peter was... Also, Peter, he's broke, in... Peter broke down, yeah. He wow. said, uh, he said um, I'm so, I want so any Anytime it was on, I was doing caveman. So it but it's gas. the same as... Uh, no, but, yeah. but, that, but that's the nature You'll of our business. But like. it's on again now next year again. Is it? Well, we're after being invited to the Paris Theatre Festival next it's May. Beautiful. And there's talk of it going to um, Australia. Well, unfortunately we had to get an immigration lawyer involved for that because of my past ah shit yeah yeah so yeah. they reckon they're going to get it over the line so there's a possibility you could be going so to Oz next like, year you know what I mean so yeah so um, so we done this piece and I went in and thought it was all going to be written and it was all sorted but it wasn't so they were just getting the jigsaw together they yeah. put it, and then they were asking me my story they were recording everything okay yeah so they yeah, were yeah. saying to me is it okay we use that now they were really nice they says look at if you're telling us it's okay to use something and you think in two weeks' time it's not, tell us. Yeah. We'll take it out. So I kind of fucking basically opened up my chest and put all my stuff out on the table and they siphled through it. So we got my story of me when I was in psychiatric institutions and when I was in prisons and the conditions and a whole lot. And Gary was telling his thing and then we had extracts from prisoners that were doing life in Mount Joy. Jesus, right. They done 18 months in there doing all these interviews with them. And we read extra extracts from there, so we put this whole piece together, and it was fucking amazing. It was brilliant. So then we done a few nights. We got it on, and you know, we got it on the Project Art Center, and you know, we got a four star review from the Irish Times, and then we went to the Fringe Festival in, in Edinburgh. Scott, Edinburgh yeah. yeah. So we only done two weeks there, but for the two weeks we were there, we made a big impact there as well, and it was just really good. So then we came back then, and we off the back of Edinburgh. We done the Dublin Fringe Festival. We done two weeks in the Project Art Centre, and I ended up on the Ray Darcy show, and I ended up on Dermot and Dave, and just giving her a few plugs and giving it a bit of publicity. And then when we done the the Fringe Festival, the, I didn't know they were telling me there's an awards at the end of it. Right. So I kind of forgot all about it. And then the Sunday morning, I woke up and I looked at my phone. And I genuinely and sincerely had forgotten that there was an awards for it. And it went, lads, because we had a group on WhatsApp, that yeah. the examination lads, and it went, just to let you know, lads, Willie has been nominated for Best Performer at the Dublin Fringe Festival, along with 12 other guys, because there were 600 actors in this, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And we were nominated for Best Production as well. So I just said to Linda, I said, well, why not do that? And I said, will we go in? Yeah. Go in for the crack, like, so me, Linda, another friend of mine, Karen, uh, it, was, it was a lovely person. Uh, it's my Karen as a barrister. I know I'm the next criminal. She's a great. So I'm mixing different circles now, you know. More so for safety if I go wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I went in and uh, so then the nominations come up for Best Performer and I won Best Performer. Amazing. Yeah, so um, 
yeah, it was fucking, it was very special. It was, um, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know how many people were actually touched. Because I'm in this room with 599 other people who are actors. And the craft is this. Yeah. And I've got, I suffer with very low self-esteem and I suffer with very low self-worth at times. And I'm kind of going, I'm not fucking... But in no, an environment the, like the, that, though, you can, you can see why you would feel like you're a bit of an imposter. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I would, for sure, like, I still call myself a stand-up, even though I've done that. And people mm. go, no, you Yeah, I know, acting. yeah, yeah. Like, and ah, I kinda, come on, like, these lads, you know. But so I get I, it, I get it. Yeah, so I went up and uh, I accepted the award, the award and I gave a bit of a speech and I said, you know, I kind of said, this is, this is for, you know, anyone that's suffering with mental health issues yeah. or anyone's in prison or anyone that's suffering with addiction, just to let you know like that, there is a way out. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. have to be like that. You know, for people that were um, homeless on the streets or people, you know, like that. I was one of them people. And here I am now, yeah. like, you know, accepting a fucking award. That's some full honor. circle. That's some circle, fucking isn't it? Hell, like, you go know, from... It was like the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up and all these people were there. You know, and I got really emotional. So I started crying yeah. and, uh, and they were all, they were everyone. People that I didn't know were just so happy for me. I was looking at the sea of these people and I going, Yes. Because loads of them had been to see the play. And oh, I didn't know. Good, right, so yeah, yeah, coming yeah. up to Avery and going, do you know what? Fucking, you deserved it. Yeah. Even people that were nominated were going, I'll take my hat off you. I've seen your performance. It was brilliant. You wore your heart in your sleeve and you, and you totally deserved it. Yeah. And it was just one of them nights where I just kind of went, <sighs> do you know what I mean? And then yeah. I got an agent. So I have an agent now because my mate was saying to me, you're an award winning actor now. Fucking right. And I was kind of going, fuck off. He goes, no, you don't realise this. Yeah. Phelan Cannon was going, this is a big fucking thing. Damn right it is, He yeah. says, it's a big thing you're out to get. And he says, don't be, you know, feel it like I'm fucking, you know. The Dublin Fringe, like, it's no fucking joke, yeah, man. Yeah, so that that was it. So now next year, it's going to take off again. And you've doubled your money, says you. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, 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 do you know what? I'm really passionate about the piece and I really like the piece. And I'd like, you know, I'd like everyone to come and to see it because yeah. it just gives you a different opinion of what goes on in prison, that's not a fucking holiday camp. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, I mean, Butlins don't fucking lock you up at half seven in the evening. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't. If you're in Butlins, you don't get to see the people that you love once a fucking week. Like. Yeah. It's not a holiday camp. Yeah. It's fucking You know, misery. it's not. If you're locked up. Your freedom is taken away from you. It doesn't matter what you have in the cell. You've no access to go anywhere. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, fucking misery. So, yeah, it's uh, it has. It's turned full circle to where I was in my life 20 years ago to where I am now holy like. shit so there you are there's a uh, when it comes out next year the Inquisition do you know where it's, is it going to tour is it going to go it is going to tour we're, we're doing a country tour yeah fantastic we'll end up in Limerick we'll be Galway the whole lot and then we'll do Dublin and amazing yeah so Willie come White come along yeah you absolute fucking champion <laughs> I mean, you're, very much. the tea actually, you know, you pulled your socks up with the tea at the end, like with that, that, that shite. I didn't have to, to make that all week, I have before you <laughs> Just so anybody, where can they, where do you want them to follow you? Are you, you, you you're on Instagram a bit. Yeah, if you I'm, I'm, get, only on, I'm only on Instagram, I'm at Willie White One on uh, Instagram. And um, if you want to get pictures, I'm on, I'm on Twitter if, as well. If you want to get some ridiculous Willie pictures White. where you'll get heart palpitations from the height that fucking Willie to be up some days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll freak you out. But uh, it's just so people can keep an eye out for where, when yeah, the play is yeah, going. So yeah, don't be shy exactly, and fucking yeah. throwing that shit up. Because sometimes I think we're too kind of, oh, fuck it. You know, we yeah, take that no, out no, fucking I attitude. Think, I think the snippets on, if you go in onto YouTube or into Google and put in the examination, uh, Dublin, you'll, you'll get to see a couple of snips of it and whatever, you know. So Beautiful. Yeah. Well, on that note, Willie, thanks very, very fucking much. Thank you very much, Tom. It's Cheers, dude. Pleasure, as always. Thanks a million, Willie. What an absolute fucking legend. A bad man to make a cup of tea either. So, like I said, uh, during the podcast, Willie White won. We'll f- just just track that man down and go see him if you haven't seen him. He's an absolute fucking diamond. And his play will be out and touring the country next year. So, when you go see t- Defending the Caveman, go see fucking Willie White. He won't let you down, as you would have just heard. Like I've said in the previous ones, follow me on all social platforms. Don't forget to give it a good rating. Five stars, none of that other bullshit. We've no use for fucking four stars or less. Bullshit. No good. No good at all. The Patreon Patreon people no, just buckshot ears. We we need more fucking listeners. Always need more more listeners. Stealing listeners. I'll fucking I'll drag listeners. I don't care. We need more listeners always because it creates more Patreons, which what? Creates better fucking and more more content for your lovely fucking ears. Now, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Get drunk, slap yourself in the belly, and enjoy the weekend.